Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's our favorite time of the week. We're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, first up this week, launching today, in fact, we have a new giant mouse. This is the Ace Atelier, which is essentially a smaller version of the Ace Grand. We've got the same kind of style here, the same distinctive lines, and yet it is now available in a size that is easier to take most places. Uh, as opposed to the 3.3 inch blade of the original, which is not huge, I will, I will grant you. Here we have something about two and seven eighths. So you've got a sub three inch blade, which still is plenty to get a lot of work done. And especially with this broad straight clip point profile that you see on this particular knife, very capable as well. Blade steel, we have Elmax, and we have a crowned spine here behind the, uh, almost a harpoon tip there, not quite. But we do have a crowned spine with some jimping there, and this knife is actually made in Maniago, Italy for the Giant Mouse brand. They tend to split things up between uh, Maniago, uh, actually not sure which knife maker they use in Maniago, but uh, they also do some stuff with Best Tech as well out of China. But this is one of the Italian options right here. Handles, speaking of options, we have two. On this case, a fluted titanium. We've, we've also got a green canvas micarta. That version's about 215. I think we're at like 285 for this titanium version right here. And I gotta say, the handle really does it for me. It's got some shapes and lines that, uh, that speak to my design sensibilities, especially with this uh, kick up here at the back. I tend to like that a lot and use that a lot. It's really good for catching that pinky finger, doing some manipulative things with that finger in terms of moving the knife where you want it to go. And even though it's not a huge handle, it's really a three and a half finger grip, at least for me, I've got a solid Gorilla grip on that knife, no problem at all. Overall, it's a really compelling package. Good blend of strength and utility with the, uh, the thickness of the blade, but you still have the full flat grind with the rigidity of these titanium handled versions, especially. We've also got a reversible wire pocket clip, very nearly completely deep carry. And we've got a liner lock nested along with ball bearings, no flipper, but the reverse flick works great. Your slow rolled uh, thumb open works perfectly as well, but it actually feels really, really good on that reverse flick right there. Very cool, available now. Next up, we have some new work tough, uh, new work tough stuff from work tough stuff. That's it's got a good ring to it. Okay. Some new work tough designs from Zeke Minacho. It's been uh, good to us with the uh, the models coming in here to the knife center, and we've got the new little evil design, a small and a large. As you can see. Definitely a bit of a departure from the Nomad series uh, and the proper chopper, of course, which we have had earlier than this, than when we were seeing this. Um, but they're, they're pretty cool. The small comes in with a six inch blade for about 249, and the large is a 7.3 inch blade for about 269. So not a huge jump between the two, but you are gonna get a pretty significantly larger knife with the larger knife. We'll talk about the small one here because I have it in my hand. The handles on each are the same, near as I can tell anyway. You're, you're just getting a blade length difference here. Uh, but there's a few different G10 handle options on each size still available, at least while we are filming this video, but they are kind of moving quickly, so no guarantees as to what is left by the time this video does post on its normal uh, Thursday schedule. But what you've got here, apart from the G10, you've got an M2 tool steel blade, and pretty thick, actually. Uh, my eyechrometers are not doing so great right now, uh, but I thought so, yeah. Over a quarter of an inch, 0.267 right there. Big, chunky thing. And it is meant to withstand a lot of abuse. What is M2? Well, it's kind of the predecessor to M4, but maybe not strictly speaking. Um, has two fewer M's actually. Two fewer M's. Two fewer M's. Um, but it's a, it's a tool steel that can be run at some slightly higher hardnesses without sacrificing too much toughness. 
uh, compared to something, I will just say D2, for example, uh, run at the same hardness, you should get more toughness and more edge retention out of the M2, but it is not stain resistant. You are gonna have to you know, make sure you don't put this away dirty or wet, lest rust could uh, kind of come knocking at your door, so to speak. But it is a stout blade. The design with the recurve here and the aggressive tip definitely feels a little more pokey hacky than uh, as opposed to cutty choppy as some of the other uh, more camp oriented designs that uh, Zeke has graced us in the Work Tough lineup with. You certainly could still do some of that stuff. And in fact, you've got a nice crisp spine up here uh, if you were looking to do like fire steel scraping and the scoop out there on the spine would also be a great place to catch a baton if you're splitting wood, but this feels more kind of tactical oriented, of course. Nice, thick, aggressive tip. You've got this recurve section here at the back, which can help gather material uh, and add more shearing power, especially on the draw or the retraction, the pull cutting applications. A lot of extra power packed into there. Just make sure you have something round that you can use to sharpen that, uh, that edge with your flat stones are gonna have a little bit of a harder time with this amount of recurve edge. Handle itself feels pretty good. It's slightly different feeling uh, to me than what I maybe was expecting. You've got kind of a classical uh, profile, classical contoured profile from the spine, but the handle here does things a little bit different than the quote unquote classic uh, shape you might think of with an extra finger groove here at the pinky. It kind of guides your guides my hands at least into a certain grip. But there is plenty to hold on to. There's a nice pinch grip point here for some smaller work, whether you're pulling a chest lever or reverse cut like so, or getting there to pinch to use the leading edge of this on a board. Exposed hang here at the back. You've got another fairly crisp edge going on here, although not as crisp as the spine. A little bit of jimping here at the back, but ultimately you've got bashing capabilities built in there too. And being a work tough, you're getting a couple things along with the design, really clean fit and finish, very smooth transitions from handle to uh, blade portion here. Very, very sharp edges, nicely convex, very well, very well refined. And along with that, some sheath, actually this is the large sheath right here. It is Kydex, you've got a tech lock, tech lock style attachment uh, included in the packaging as well as some other, uh, other goodies, including a carry strap and bag and zip pouch. That's what I was looking for. Some other cool, nice things too. Get them right now while, uh, while we still have them, so to speak. Next up, uh, we've got some new versions of a couple of last year's or the last recent history's most popular folding knives. The first is the, uh, the Demco AD 20.5 now available in a more premium version with a stainless steel, a higher end stainless steel. This is S35 VN, as opposed to the AUS-10 of the standard base model. And we've got G10 and carbon fiber instead of the, I think it was Grivery, the injection molded scales of the originals. About, uh, well, we've got both blade shapes here, as you can see, you got the shark's foot, haha, -ha, uh, coming in just under three inches and about 3.2, you've got the straight clip point. Both knives equipped, of course, with the shark lock, which as you can see by my flickability here, uh, both right and left hand compatible, thanks to the spine mounting and makes the knife ambidextrous as well. Cause even though the pocket clip is not reversible, you do have a second pocket clip uh, included for left side. Very nice uh, price on these. Should we get to that? Uh, for the carbon fiber, we're looking at about 265 on about 250 for this Digicam G10 right here. Fit and finish is exactly uh, what you would hope, uh, what you would expect if you've experienced these knives yet, which if you've not, let's just say they're quite good. The action is great. The lock is very strong. And despite it, its looks, doesn't really get in the way either. It can act as a thumb ramp, or if you're choking up, the way I hold it at least, my thumb doesn't really feel uncomfortable there. Yeah, I rest on it a little bit, but for the type of cuts I'm gonna be doing there, not really in the way either, which is a bit of a surprise, kind of surprised me personally when I first started using these knives. But there you go. Upgraded handle materials, along with the, uh, the bigger pivot than the injection molded versions, along with your more premium stainless powder metallurgy here with the S35. Very good choice. 
Next up, the Tactile Knife Company Rockwall. We have uh, some limited edition uh, DLC versions. Uh, actually, so there's a DLC, there's a Cerakote, a couple of Cerakote options. We'll start with that. Uh, we've got an orange, orange Cerakote. Uh, all of these are coming in $3.99 right now. That's $3.99, not $3.99. And we have this green, uh, what's the word, Cerakoted one as well. Start with the orange. You've got that nice, vibrant orange. It's a really well executed color along with the black DLC Magna Cut blade. Everyone's favorite steel right now for pretty good reason with black accenting hardware all around. And they even gave you a nice little uh, kind of warning symbol on the back side of the pivot there, kind of spicing it up from the standard versions or another little added detail, little added twist, I should say. This one right here, especially the orange takes it, I think very far in a different personality than the standard uh, milled titanium option, which I thought, I've always thought makes a good uh, higher end or a more gentlemanly carry this one. Maybe not so gentlemanly, but it's got the same good bones <laughs> underneath as well. This green is the Overlander version, also with that Magna Cut blade, but with the stone washed finish. And since we've got a couple more Magna Cut things to look at, if you're unfamiliar with it, it kind of bridges the gap between all three areas of knife performance, very high marks in all of those three that most don't get. I mean, we were talking about the M2 earlier, where it was good edge retention and really good toughness, but not so corrosion resistant. Those are the three columns. And usually the th there's one that's not as good as the other two, because when you push those other two, the third one suffers, but not so much here. Virtually stain proof, very high toughness, very high edge retention as well. So it's good stuff. The extra little details on this one, in addition to the two tones of kind of green, you've got almost actually, what is that pattern? I was about to say fish scale, but it's not really. I'm not sure uh, how to describe that, but we'll get a, we'll get a good close up. You got a cool texture on the back of the pivot and on the pocket clip too. And that actually on the pocket clip gives you a little bit of uh, a, a functional amount of texture there that most of the other versions don't. But you've still got the inset liner lock, you've still got the ball bearings, and you've still got thumb stud action that pops really, really nicely. And last but not least, you've we have, you could have if you uh, decide to purchase it, the stealth version. Uh, I guess I should give the uh, the name of the orange. I just said it was orange. This is the safety first version. Hence the warning uh, warning symbol there. But the stealth, you've got a black DLC titanium along with the rest of the bits. Red thumb studs, red backspacer, and red screws here at the back. And for the back side of the pivot, you got crosshairs going on. Really, really cool. Not actually, I was about to say, not sure which one's my favorite. But you know, me being me, I like that Overlander. It's got a little bit of campy camp out vibes going on. One more tactile to talk about. And this is a fixed blade. This is the dread eye, uh, which we had a little bit uh, come through a little earlier this year, but they kind of flew super fast. Well, we have some back in stock right now. 199 for these there is a kydex as well as a leather sheath option. Take your pick. Uh, both of them are the same price right now. But here you can see the kydex a little bit on the wider side to accommodate that full sized tech lock on the back. Very easy to carry that up down horizontal, whichever orientation you prefer. And then you've got just this small, everyday ready fixed blade. It's not a huge tactical thing. Your blade here is only about two and three quarters of an inch, kind of a Tonto profile as well. Magna cut steel as well. Nice stone washed finish that's going to hide the scratches as you use the knife too. always a nice touch in my book. G10 handle scales milled with the same kind of diagonal texture they like to put on their titanium as well as their pens, the tactile pen company or tactile turn pens, I should say. All actually, I just made a mistake. This is rich light. This is not G10. Even cooler in my book, actually. I like that. So it's basically paper micarta, if you're not familiar, has slightly different feel than G10 in this application, but not too far different. But with the way they've milled it, it kind of tricks the mind maybe just a little bit. It's a little bit on the small side for my slightly larger than average hands, but I can still get a solid gorilla grip on it when I want to. And then I can choke up for the finer detail. And actually, I'm, I'm going to revise my statement, even though it's 
feels a little small. It actually feels like a good compromise as I'm gripping it there. Cause I can, like I said, I can do the big chunky grip and then I can get down on the smaller stuff when the time is needed for that sort of thing. Actually feels pretty darn good. So there you go. If you want something bigger, let's talk about tour knives. Uh, tour knives of Valor Mark one. Here it is new blade here, 350 bucks made in the USA, just like the tactiles that we just looked at. Uh, five and a half inch blade CPM three V. So great toughness, very good edge retention, not as good on the corrosion resistance though. But in this case, we have a nice blade coating to help out on that front. You only really have to worry about the edge in this case. The handles here are G10. And what's funny is if you'd handed me this and the tactile and asked me, asked me which one or asked me to tell you which one was G10 and which one was rich light, I would have mixed it up. This almost the G10 on this uh, tour almost feels like rich light. Almost it has that slightly more matte finish to it. Maybe that's it uh, compared to the one, uh, the knife we just looked at that's kind of throwing me off a little bit there. The blade feels a little more inspired by like the classic Mark II fighting knife, like the K bar. But especially with the designation, the Valor MK1, it's sized a little more like the Mark I, the USN Mark I, which is you know about a five inch blade or just over in some cases. Very interesting. Very capable blade in any case. You've got nice acute piercing thanks to the clip point there. But with the flat grind, you've got some strength for some heavier tasks. Thickness on the blade looks about 530 seconds of an inch should give you plenty of toughness along with that 3V steel there for sure. Full tang construction, you've got an impact point there at the back. The sheath is Kydex, similar in color to the blade. The whole pattern here is compatible with a large tech lock hole spacing. You are gonna have to provide your own, however, no, uh, no belt attachment included out of the box with this knife. Next up on the big fixed blade kick, we seem to be a uh, bit of a theme, which is fine by me. I like a good fixed blade after all. Uh, we've got several designs uh, from Dirk Pinkerton and Beyond EDC this week. We actually had a, a big chunk of new Beyond EDC just hit the site. Uh, most of them are in-house designs, but several of them were, uh, were Pinkerton designs. So I decided to pull those this week. Just know there's, uh, there's even more new stuff on the site right now. Make sure to check it out. Uh, the first one is the cleaver cleaver with a K and two E's instead of an EA. But there it is $130 four and a quarter inches on the blade VG 10 steel with a very, very attractive stone washed finish on this one. The handle is G 10. It is coyote tan on this particular one. Actually, I think that's the only one we have right now with a bit of contour, which is cool. On the thin side, though, it's not like a something that at least I would want to kind of grip real hard and push through a lot of heavier tasks, which brings brings us to the next point intended tasks for this knife. Well, it's I I'm having a little bit of trouble with this one. I'll be honest. It's cool. And I'm wondering if that's the primary purpose right here. Yeah, you could do some food prep with it. It has a bit of handle clearance, but if you're using it as like a chef knife type of cleaver and you're working on a cutting board, you're going to hit the handle before you, uh, you finish the travel, hang off the edge of the cutting board. You could certainly do it a little bit better. It's not really a meat cleaver type of thing. You're not really going to hit super hard with this. It's more nimble. It is very cool. However, certainly do some uh, some utility stuff with it may not be the most efficient at some of those tasks, but you're gonna feel awesome doing it. Sometimes I'll admit that is what matters. The sheath is Kydex. Here you go has kind of a spine draw thing going on. Pardon me. And it comes with this belt attachment right here. As you can see, it's two pieces. Actually, does this rotate? Looks like you might be able to loosen that one screw right here and rotate the uh, clip portion as opposed to the mount. And I haven't checked yet, but let's see if we've got uh, tech lock compatibility baked in. Yep, you can uh, run a large tech lock right here on the middle side or on the bottom if you're uh, so inclined. Let's check out a small tech lock. And eh, not quite small tech lock here on the, uh, the top end, but good that uh, you do have some extra compatibility with the whole spacing 
if you wish. Next up, a couple of more affordable folders. I know this has been a fairly expensive week so far with the earlier stuff. So we do have a few new affordable things that have hit the site this week. The first, they're not crazy bargain basement, but 60 to $70 on these is, is a bit more reasonable for many folks. Uh, the first is the Slim Flipper by Dirk Pinkerton. Uh, there you go, $60 for this, 14C 28 and blade, 3.8 inches of it. Very, very good deal, I think, for the money. You got that great stainless steel, one of my favorites in the more affordable range, good toughness, good enough edge retention, pretty darn stainless too. And with this much of it and that aggressive, true Warncliffe profile, got a very aggressive cutter and a very acute tip for piercing and detail work too. Very, very cool. Green micarta is the handle material over full length liners. We've got ball bearings in the pivot with the liner lock there and your standard flipper there at the back. Works great. Deep carry pocket clip. It is reversible for either side as well. Next up, we have the Custos three and a half inches on the blade here, about eight bucks more. This is a $68 knife, but you do have VG 10 steel here, which is a, a little bit more premium than the 14 C 28 N. Although personally, I like the 14 C a little bit better. That's just me. But here you go. Drop point profile, high flat grind, actually high flat on both of these uh, knives we just looked at with the secondary bevel, of course. And that secondary here is very, very thin. I mean, that's like Civivi levels of thin right there. Ooh, it feels very nicely sharp too. Handles, similar story to tell here. Micarta over full liners, liner lock, ball bearings, flipping action that works well. Single sided pocket clip only in this case and not quite deep carry, but it is nested inside the handle with flush mounted screws, which you don't get that on the slim. You still get the flush mounted screws, but the, uh, the clip does sit on top on that particular design. Balance feels pretty good. This should be a great EDC, certainly uh, in the size and shape that floats my boat. Actually, I haven't tried this yet though. We do have these small fullers up here, which work well for a pinch open there. No, I don't, I don't have the kind of leverage I need to do a reverse flick. You might, but a lot of you are better than me at that sort of thing. One more, actually, no, still two more uh, Dirks to talk about. The first one is a bit more expensive. This is the Chunk. There you go. And despite the name, it's, it's definitely broad, but it doesn't really say Chunk to me. I mean, look at that profile from the top down. That is still, as long as you have enough kind of area in your pocket, that should carry very easily. Nice and flat, in fact. The handles are titanium. They do have a bit of contour. You can kind of see that well from the front angle right here. There you go, Thomas. If you'll stay in one place. Thank you. There you go. Son of a... <laughs> kind of a rectangular profile when closed, but with the ball bearings, flips real well. Just enough handle size for me with my slightly larger than average hands. They do feel a little bit cramped, but not unusably so. Like I could certainly still use this knife effectively, even if I might wish for, you know, another eighth of an inch or quarter inch of space to be just right for me. Your mileage will, of course, vary with that. But the lockup feels great. You've got some thumb hardware here, which more or less matches the pivot hardware too. Kind of cool. Uh, looks like actually they're both adjustable with a uh, with hex here on the back as opposed to your typical Torx in the industry. Kind of cool. Milled pocket clip. Yeah, frame lock, titanium. Oh, steel, S35VN, three and a half inches long, plenty of height. So you can still, with that full flat grind, you've got great slicing prowess built in. A lot of belly though, so keep that in mind if you're, if you're pushing through, something can be a little easier to slip out of a task, but that's pretty cool. And honestly, even at 190, it's not an affordable knife, but for what you're getting, it's not half bad at all. And last but not least, from the Beyond EDC Dirk Pinkerton collabs this week, we have the Micro Santoku neck knife. You're not really gonna be doing a lot of food prep with this, but I can see what they're going for with the, with the uh, shape of it anyway. Throw your uh, index finger in the ring right there, and you've got these two 
kind of scoop outs right behind it. Great for anchoring, in my case, my thumb and middle finger. If you're using your index finger through there, it'll likely be the same, which makes me think actually, what if we wanted to kind of push dagger this? Eh, it's a little less comfortable because I'm, I'm hitting the jimping rather than back on this area. Figuring out these grips, actually really nice. This right here too, pinching in the hole right there allows me to wrap my in middle finger around that scoop at the back. I feel like I have a lot of control over this, especially that fob adds a little bit extra for your pinkies there too. That's your, that's your neck knifey box cutter for sure. As far as the sheath, it is Kydex. No attachment hardware provided here because this is designed to be carried in neck style fashion. So add your own preferred method of neck carry there. And what's nice is even though you don't have a full cutout for the finger, in my case anyway, even though my fingers are a little bit on the larger side, I can still get my finger through that indexing hole without drawing the knife. So when I do draw the knife, my grip is immediately in place. I don't have to adjust anything for a standard cut, except for maybe just gripping it fully, but your hand is right where it needs to be. S35 VN is the steel, 1.6 inches is the blade length. I guess they're talking about the, uh, the sharpened length here. Uh, single piece, all the edges are done real nicely, so they're very comfortable. No nothing sharp sticking out for you, but you do have enough grip on the jimping. 90 bucks for this piece right here. Next up, we've got a couple of uh, high-end production pieces. Uh, quantities are limited on these, however. First is the Arcane Designs Pratheon. This is a front flipper. It's 370 bucks. You've got a three and a quarter inch 20 CV blade with titanium handles and carbon fiber inlays front and back. There's two versions as for the blade. You got a satin version or the uh, heavy stone wash or kind of acid etched and then stone washed version you see right here. That one is going to match the titanium handles pretty nicely though. Now, interestingly here, this is not a frame lock. You might've expected that. In fact, I kind of did. From the front, you see a picture on the website, it looks like the sort of thing that typically would have a frame lock, but we have an inset liner lock here. And that can be a helpful thing on a knife, especially for me with something like a front flipper, where if you had a frame lock, any lock bar pressure you, or any pressure with your fingers that gets put onto the lock bar can make it harder to front flip. That said, this one's not the easiest to front flip for me. I kind of, I can get it, but I have to actually put some wrist into it. I'm much more happy personally with those thumb studs. As you can see, it was a great action there. Really cool blade shape too, with this straight clip point, high flat grind, a bit of a uh, fuller there or milled out channel in front of the thumb studs. It is striking, great little shape. You've got a milled deep carry pocket clip. That's pretty cool. And it's one of my favorite styles, as you folks know, mounted from the tail. So that's going to be nestled into a pocket quite nicely when you go to carry it around. And last but not least, we have the Kingdom Armory Mini Rogue. Uh, these come in at 485. They are designed by Dave Ridbaum and made in the USA by Chad Nichols. That's kind of a pretty cool story right there. Two and seven eighths of an inch on the blade. It is XHP steel from Carpenter. Really cool shape that on our website says modified drop point. Really? Modified. You know, as much as as much stick as I give you for, uh, or, or and give the industry sometimes for the over reliance on the term reverse tanto, that's one I would be way inclined to just right off the bat call her reverse tanto. It's working, guys. It doesn't even feel like a modified sheep's foot, which most reverse tantos kind of are. This one isn't though. This even, this feels more reverse Tonto than the Benchmade 940, which kind of, you know, popularized the term, I'd say. We have a new standard. There you go. It is a cool, kind of powerful feeling blade shape, despite the size. I mean, it has a, a bit of cleavery nature to it, even though it's not cleaver shaped. It's got that same kind of broad attitude going on. Interesting. Stonewashed titanium for the handles and a pretty good match with the blade finish as well. OD, or sorry, not OD green. This is a black G10 inlay on both sides. There is also an OD green available. Quantities are limited on these as well though. 
milled titanium pocket clip on the kind of industrial blocky feeling nature. Frame lock, as you can see, folds up. This is a thumb opener. Works great that way. And I haven't actually even tried to reverse flick it yet, but hmm. Yeah, need a little bit of wrist on that one too. Interesting. Actually, the feel of that, again, I should have done this before we got on camera. This is uh, not a ball bearing based pivot here. You've got that more rigid, more fluid feel of washers as opposed to the uh, kind of frictionless feeling that bearings can help provide. Kind of nice. The other thing I really dig about it is despite the small size, nice full grip on the knife. The handle is done in such a way that you can get right up there behind the edge too, without having to rely on something like a finger choil, which could rob you of useful blade edge. You get almost all that three inches of usable edge there. High flat grind, powerful, powerful feeling blade shape, cool steel you don't see as much anymore. Yeah, it's kind of a small but mighty thing right there. Interesting. Spending a little more time on that one because I think that one, even though it was the last one in the video, kind of surprised me the most, especially the more I held it. it actually might be my favorite this week. <laughs> well, what was your favorites this week? Let me know down in the comments and to try and get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description that'll take you to knifecenter.com. While you're over there, always remember, we've got our knife rewards program, which means when you buy one of these knives today, you get to earn some free money to spend on a future purchase. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time.